Hello from the Qualitative Election Study of Britain Election Night Special. I am Ezia and I'm Christy and we are really pleased to be doing this. So this is the first of quite a few blogs to, to keep you occupied as you wait for um, the election uh, results till 6 a.m. I think or yeah. Saturday. Seven. Yeah. Or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we'd give you um, snippets of um, our research, things that we find that we have found to be quite interesting that have come out from the last three or four weeks of doing focus groups all across Britain. So we've done focus groups in Scotland, Wales and England and our participants have been extremely insightful and extremely generous with their time and we thought we'd give you a flavour of what they have said. So we'll start with the impressions of the campaign um, and there are about four points that we are going to go through. The first is uh, contact from parties, so um, how did our participants feel in terms of um, people coming to their door and so on. Um, many people felt that it was a negative campaign and so we'll touch upon that. Um, some of our participants felt that there was not enough policy discussion by some of the parties and of course this idea that's come up in Scotland about two campaigns that have been going on. So Chrissy, do you want to take the first bit? Sure, in terms of contact from the parties, just one second, to protect my drink from the kitten. Um, one of the things that we talked to, we went to some safe seats, we went to some open seats, we went to some marginal seats and the participants from all around the country had felt like they had received, they had been getting lit, uh, some of it was hand posted, but most of it was uh, came through the mail rather than being delivered in person, and that they hadn't reported a lot of personal contact with activists from the various campaigns. And the other thing was that they um, would report getting leaflets from some parties, but not from others. So from that, we, we kind of got the impression that our participants at least weren't feeling like there were, the campaign was reach, campaigns were reaching out, making an effort to touch base with them, to contact them, to show them real people. Rather, they were spending their money on leaflets, which, you know, some would just got to the point by the end of the campaign, they'd see it was a leaflet and they would bin it. Some people would read them all, but it felt like there was a, a real distance or a lack of interpersonal communication um, from our participants, I think, more generally. Mm. Many of our participants felt that the campaign was quite boring. Uh, we did have participants who felt that this was really really lively and it was very interesting and so on but we also got the impression that some people compared to previous years just couldn't understand why it was so flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah I think they compared it to last time 2010 with the whole idea of a hung parliament being quite exciting and novel and now even though this campaign is more ambiguous in terms of what it's actually going to result in, in the government that it's going to result in but there isn't a lot of that same kind of passion and excitement mm. or even yeah interest in this c potential constitutional not crisis but maybe a constitutional crisis that the country is facing yeah so that's about contact from the parties the second um, issue that came up um, especially in Scotland but also in um, some of our groups in England was this, many of our participants felt that it was quite a negative campaign. So they were being told um, why they shouldn't be voting for certain parties, not why they should be voting for a party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that really did come across in terms of like the scaremongering and the idea that somehow if you can scare someone into voting for you, that's not the same as saying, oh, I really enjoy your policies or I think your policies are right for the country. That case, the positive side was not being made um, in all except one campaign, uh, one party, and that party was? The SNP. So we did not get any sense that the SNP was scaring people into voting for them. It, was, it really felt, especially when people were talking about Nicola Sturgeon, it really felt that the, the, the SNP was portraying them uh, itself as uh, a party that will get things done and this is how they will get things done and this is what you get if you mm -hmm. vote for the SNP. This whole idea of a voice for Scotland. We had quite a few people in Scotland, in, uh, among our Scottish participants who repeated that phrase, a voice for Scotland, it kind of really resonated with them. Yeah, and I mean clearly, you know, the SNP is anti-conservative. <laughs> but what Nicola was saying is if you don't want 
uh, and an austerity agenda, if you don't want to see the Conservatives back in number 10, then join us because we are committed to um, you know, fighting the austerity agenda and to keeping the Tories out. And so even though it's negative in that it's against the Conservatives, it wasn't purely a vote SNP, get Conservative, you know, that's kind of ter tactic, which you did see with the other parties. Yeah. And connected to this idea that um, the campaign was negative and not really for something, at least the campaigning by some parties, connected to that idea was this, that there wasn't much of policy discussion by the other parties. So um, some of our participants felt that, especially with the Conservative Party, when David Cameron said that there would be 12 billion of cuts, he wasn't clear enough for them where these cuts were coming from, what was going to get affected. Mm -hmm. um, and they were quite concerned by that because 12 billion is a lot of money. So is it going to affect me? Is it going to affect the people that I know? Mm -hmm. What aspects of my life is this going to affect? They didn't feel that he was clear enough. Yeah, I think there was a sense of, look, we're grown ups. Just be honest with us. Tell us what you're going to do so that we can make an informed decision. Because if you promise us things and you don't tell us how you're going to deliver it, then you can't really say that you're you're actually providing any policies, you're just dangling things. And I kind of contrast this non-answer with people who respected Nicola for saying clear policies even when they disagreed. Yeah. So I think the best example of this was uh, there are people who are opposed to her position on Trident in terms of getting rid of, you know, spending that money on something else. But she had, at least she didn't say, you know, we're going to get rid of Trident and then not have any defense. She's like, I think we need to invest in our conventional weapons because I think the kind of world we live in now, we need more on conventional weapons side than on the nuclear side. You can disagree with that, but at least you understand where she's coming from. That's a policy articulation that people go, okay, that makes sense to me and we can have a discussion about the extent to which we fund conventional versus nuclear weapons, that felt like being treated like a grown-up, yeah. I think, to our participants. Yeah. And then finally, this idea, kind of almost wrapping this up actually, is the idea that some of our Scottish participants mentioned, which was that they felt there were two campaigns during this election, election campaign. Uh, and that there was one campaign going on in Scotland and there was another campaign going on in the rest of the UK. Um, and so they felt that this was a bit disjointed and a bit new because they hadn't felt this kind of separation in previous election campaigns. Yeah, and I think they also felt like the campaign in Scotland was more positive and that's part of what distinguished it from the campaign in the rest of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think that's a wrap in terms of the impressions of the campaign. We will have the impressions of party leaders, um, a really interesting question about who our participants wanted to get stuck in a lift with for two <laughs> hours and who they didn't want to get stuck in a lift with, um, and then other uh, findings from our focus groups. So till then, thanks for watching. Yep, I've been Christy. And I'm Edzia. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.